kind of entrance that you would make out of a snow match? Cool, calm and collected, not showing a great deal of emotion, but ready to play. Well, I think uh, you know, the combined pulse rate of these two great Filipinos is in the low 20s, uh, and you're not going to phase them with an entrance no matter what. And they've been here before, and um, I think that you know, they're excited, but they're in control of themselves, and, and that's why they are two of the greatest players that have ever held a nine-ball pool cue. And Ray Evan Reyes there, well, a million metre out on the leg, he'll be upset with that. Well, control is the key, isn't it? Control of the nine ball. If you can control it and take it down when it needs to be, you'll be on cloud nine because you'll be through to the final. But it is an interesting factor that both these players, especially in the case of Bustamante, who looks up to Efren Reyes, as, as do many of the players, yes. as the big hero, what's, what's the psychology here? How are they going to play that? Because they must know each other's games extremely well. Well, um, I, I assume that uh, at one stage Reyes was the master and Bustamante was the pupil. I don't know the whole history of how they developed. Um, but of course Bustamante has gone on to bigger and greater things. You would then think that it's the possibility that uh, Bustamante would have moved on a gear uh, and, and perhaps Efren Reyes would fold uh, once uh, Bustamante got away from him. But at this game it's not, not exactly the same as other sports and it's more knowledge than anything else and um, this guy's certainly got the knowledge. So I think we're in for a cracking game. I, I don't think that Bustamante is absolutely guaranteed to win. And um, if anybody gets off to a, a flying start, that could be the, the telling blow. Positionally, he's looking okay for this first rack. Yes, it doesn't seem to be a problem. I would imagine that four ball squeezes past the orange five. He's got to be careful if, if he moves the five where the balls are going to end up. That's any problem there, I would think. And this is a nice, cosy start for Efren Reyes. These matches now getting longer. Both players, I would imagine, would relish the, the final, the chance to really expand themselves. But a race to 11 is a fair test, and I'm sure these players are delighted that, that they get a fair crack. Mr. Mante was in the studio here last night and said that uh, he'd never actually beaten Efren Reyes in the Philippines, which of course is so important to both these men. He'd beaten them in the States, as we know these pitches are going to the Philippines, so this would be the time, knowing that the people in the Philippines are watching, to do it. But, uh, and I'm sure both players are aware of that fact. Well, that's a lot. Is, is it live out there at the moment? Not that's live, I don't think. Well, it could, it could, well, uh, yeah, it'll still draw a massive crowd, and um, yeah, a great chance for Bastamento to, uh, to prove himself it's not going to be easy, I know. This, this guy is such a legend, you know. You, he's a god out in the Philippines, and uh, quite rightly so. You get out of jail from any position on a pool table. Well, both these men learned their trade in the pool halls of Manila and around the Philippines, and now they've brought it to a worldwide audience and have taken on the rest of the world, including the best Americans. They've beaten all those, and now they've got to beat each other. And Efren Reyes, as cool as you like, as Steve mentioned. Very low pulse rate, I would have thought, between the two of them. No fear, no worries. Done it all before. But the pressure, the, the thought of the idea of being the world champion must have something in the back of the mind that niggles you when you're at this stage. Well, yes, and it would be a great, a great psychological boost for Efren Reyes, who I don't think travels to the States as much as Bustamante, to actually sort of steal this world championship and... Um, make his mark and once again strike fear into the hearts of all the players. I suppose as years go on, then I would imagine um, people think, well, perhaps there's a new generation coming through and even though Efren Reyes was great, his time has, has gone. But this would just um, put him back right there in the spotlight. Good break off again. And Buster Mente, he has to come, he had to come to the table. Very true. Efren Reyes is off and running. He's 1-0 up and he's well underway in this second rack. Let's join our commentary team now. Thanks, Steve of Jim Weish and Sid Waddell. Thanks so much lads and uh, excellently set up uh, the old maestro and the uh, world's number one player who was formerly his pupil and uh, taking up that point about the direct slightly higher because the yellow one was going into the middle bags. Uh, Reyes last time out Stuttered a bit, could not get a productive break. Now, if he comes to terms with a higher racking, which he seems to have done, 
Uh, those of us who stuck out our long Anglo-Saxon necks could get the heads chopped off. I tip Bustamante here because he can slaughter the break. Um, that was based on how Efren struggled with his break. Um, that I think could be the fact that if Efren gets a productive break, one or two even, this could be absolutely down to the wire. Come on. Well, what a horrid miss from Reyes there. He didn't leave himself enough angle and he knew it. But watch this. Just trying to pinch that pocket and as big as they might be, sometimes you take liberties and that one came up to bite Reyes. Massive crowd here. Uh, came and really got their bellies boiling when Jimmy White was playing. And maybe there's a few couples pool fans here in Cardiff we're going to call that kid Griffith Reese Griffiths. Well now maybe call him the kid Francisco Efren Griffiths in a few months time because these two blokes have certainly captured the public's imagination here in South Wales. Django, genius, cordial off the pitch, killer on that white surface. With the white on the blow. No fear in queuing and hurling the queuing shots, Jim. Well, certainly in terms of shot making, he may well have no equal in the world. Francisco Bustamante, in most people's minds, players and fans alike, the best player on the planet today. And Bustamante, by virtue of that horrid miss from Reyes, takes the second rack. But he had to make a couple good shots to get over the finish line in it. A great seven there. Referee, uh, Michaela Tab, rocks him up. Only 5-3, there were about six players on a straight run. They played 5-1-5 five, five in that first round. Easy again selling. Uh, Rambi, that was a dice out. 9-8, Fabio Petroni, matches Buster four. Yes, he's just put a little bit of powder on his hands just to keep it nice and loose. The humidity here, they want that cue flowing nice and smooth. He's got a damp rag there as well. Bustamante with a very long, fluid cueing action, and now you're going to see the break that has them all talking. This is a phenomenon in world sports. Pin back your ears and just look at this for muscular mental coordination. And the control of the white. Well, that's not going to be as good as you're going to see, but I'll tell you what, it's not bad. He's got a bank shot on the one if he decides to take it on. The only problem is he's taking the cue ball away from the blue two. But another look at the form from Bustamante. Leg, shoulder, the head going up, and everything in motion. Well, you know, cricketers wear uh, arm guards, hip guards, everything. I think he should wear a kidney guard in regard to where his heel goes. Amazing leg movement. They're very athletic, these Filipino players. Tremendous talents. They play all Q sports. Well, he's turned down the bank shot, Sid, for the very reason he couldn't stay on the two. That looks evil. Well, I don't know whether or not he's completely snookered Reyes, but at 1-1, from our overhead perspective there, very difficult to tell. Ten years difference between these two. Oh. The eyes of a junkyard dog, Reyes. Couldn't have put it better myself, as the song said, meaner than a junkyard tom. This should be a classic, should be one of the great pool games of all time. This is equal to Fat Man taking on Fast Eddie Felson. There's a lot in this match, Sid. A lot of variables. These two, arguably the two best players to come out, come out of the Philippines. The pretender to the crown and the king. Didn't want that double bunt on the cushion. 
and there is a very sweet looking 4-9 plant at the bottom of the table. And Francisco doesn't spend much time in the Philippines anymore. He resides in Germany, does most of his playing on the Camel Tour in America, whereas Reyes goes straight back home after events. Of a cut. Yes, up off the queue very early too, Sid. Usually a sign of just a little anxiousness. And this one's set up for Bustamante again. A bad miss in the second rack cost him. This was a difficult pot, but Reyes would expect to get it. Right. He so it's beautifully positioned to get the blue two and the red three and I suggest maybe thinking about the plant on the pink. Well he's having a look to see if that pink four is available bottom left and I'm not sure it is and if it isn't he might be forced to play the combination onto the nine here there you can see the relationship of both balls to that corner pocket. I think he may have to play the combination, Sid. Absolutely, Echo, because of the position of the brown. The brown stops the run through involving the seven, so he's now going to plant the pink onto the nine for two one. And when this guy plants, Titch March steps aside. A great shot here. Never easy to judge. That had to be made. Bustamante starting to assert a little of the favoritism that many thought. Given his breaking power, it's all to play for here in the semifinal. Right now, it couldn't be any better poise, Sid. Two racks to one for Bustamante, and he's breaking off in the fourth rack to try and extend that lead. And they went to Germany several years ago and made the local pool players keel over in the keel area as he blasted them for a really big Deutschmark. Because make no mistake about it, this game is owned on the smell and color of money. A dynamite break from Bustamante there. Again, everything moving and pinpoint accuracy on that cue ball. Years of honing that have turned him into a force all over the world. Yep, how do you get to the Cardiff International Arena? You practice. Left the rail a little more than he would have liked that one, Jim, but the a very cute angle of the pocket took it in. The long bridge, no fear. Look at the length of the bridge here. Yeah, the bridge is about 18 inches long. The control. Well, Bustamante is yet to hit any bumps in the road. He's had a couple mistakes from Reyes, and he's pounced on both of them. Jet eye predator in action. Cool genius. Bustamani. He's got something to prove in this one. A man he probably grew up idolizing sits opposite. And Francisco Bustamante wants the throne. And he's been sitting with Efren having a quiet chat in a Cornish pasty before the game, surrounded by fans. They have autographed every excusable part of the anatomy of some young lads. Heroes in their own country and I would guess to the hundred million who play this game all over the world. Nine ball pool. A flash game. If you could hit the balls like these guys you would be the pool hall Richard. As Rod Stewart once sung about. You make me jealous but I worship you with your high colour and your high heel shoes. Well, it takes all sorts of play but must he here on so. Is he ever? An anxious moment on the eighth, but in the end, home and dry. A two-rack lead and 3-1 now in front in this race to 11. And Bustamante knows that his big weapon is his break. 
And if he keeps winning racks, he'll be breaking off. But there must have been an anxious moment for that eight. <laughs> Hunched there. Like a guy just sitting, thinking about having a cigar and a drink and watching his corn grow. 5-3 he did in the early rounds. Best win there. I think his Suke win, 11-7 there. He ran eight straight to beat Suke, the former world champion. Yes, and you'll see there a 9-8 nail-biting win over the whirlwind Jimmy White. He's had a few anxious moments in this tournament too, has Reyes. I heard murmurs of this man, the great Mike Massey was the first one to mention Buster Manic to me when he'd been in a tournament in Vegas and this guy hit this racket 43 mile an hour. And he's about nine stone wet through. Well, a mistake, the first one from Francisco. And at 3-1 ahead, he'll work that one out, but watch that cue ball. He hit it good, Sid, but the pace of this table just drawing that cue ball into the center pocket. And he was watching it right off the start. Look at his eyes, right on it. Right, just the line to run four or five now, my friend. Crowd absolutely hushed and tense watching this battle of the maestros. While well, Reyes patience in his seat, waiting for his opportunity. Finally it comes. Bustamante put three racks together with Reyes's miss. Now it's down to Afrin to respond. There's no hard work here. It almost looks like he could leave the cue ball in the center of the table. The orange five is next. Side cushion, side cushion to come back down for the six. Nice and loose hold on the cue. Starts to stun across for the orange. Now he's got a choice, Sid. He can either play this left side cushion, right side cushion with a lot of bottom, or run around the table with a lot of inside English on the cue ball. And he's played it the way I thought first. Now he's got to clear the nine. Has he hit it hard enough? Again. I'm sure his heart was in his mouth for a brief instant. Comes from a pretty rough background in terms of economic considerations. <coughs> place called Mexico, Pampanga was brought up in, played money pool from the age of nine. Still plays to take home the bacon or Philippine equivalent to his family. Efren had a real character building match en route to the semi-final. Akikumo Toshikawa in the quarters, 11-9 he progressed there and he really wasn't on song. He's hoping he saved his best when he needed it most. And that's in this one, Sid. Against Bustamante, he will need to be in top gear. He's got to have his A game. He's 3-2 down and breaking in the sixth rack. Tap just ensuring to get the rack exactly right. It's so important. All the balls are touching. The break off in nine ball, an integral part to a success ratio from the player that's hitting them. Yeah, the big thing is not the power. You have to have enough power to make the ball scatter and maybe get the nine going. But you also must control the white. Ideal place right in the middle. <laughs> Both players certainly seem to be breaking an awful lot better today, Sid. Now, I don't know whether Efren can get through to the one. If he can see enough of it, he may be able to play the combination. But another look at the splash on that diamond of balls. Neither one getting the nine in gear, though. The one eight present a combination or a plant, but can he see enough of the one to get it? 
Rules are you have to go for the low ball. Just kiss the one. Plays the intermediate shot. And opens up the whole table now. Looking good for 3 3, Efren. Only a glaring mistake is going to stop that scoreline. Riez at 45 years of age, an icon in the Philippines. And it must be said, of 96 players who came here, at least 35 players had him down as their paradigm of the game. Well, he's such a gentleman. Rarely spoke, rarely speaks unless spoken to. Like, will you take a check? Or cash. <laughs> and there's a lot of people that Efren has faced off with in the game of nine ball. I guarantee you said that their pockets thought their hands were crazy. They were digging out their cash so fast. Well, the game is so much more organized. The authorities playing a great role in its worldwide spread, but they're still at edge. We won't use the word hustler because the Americans don't like it. To them, it means something to do with cheating. To us, Geordies, just means wide boy, sharp guy. Guy with limbo dancing underneath the swing door. Exciting game. Now to be brought to balance. This one could go all the way. This race to 11 between two pool legends coming in with a bit of right hand side. And down goes the nine. And Reyes is putting pay to the bad break off from Bustamante. The Philippine flags are waving, Sid, regardless of the outcome here. How are the match a reflection of how strong this game is in Taiwan? Two Taiwan players where there are many professionals and many clubs and the game is partially like other government sponsored. Not sure the Philippines government sponsor it. But uh, two heroes of the Pacific Rim here. Both players know the importance of this one. They're playing for $15,000. The loser will go home with that much. U.S. The winner assures himself of 30 and a shot at the $60,000 winner's ticket. And Efren, the magician Reyes, winds it up to break off in the seventh rack. Lost the cue ball there. He's been a bit lucky. Does he have a shot at the one? Well, it's ominous for Busty because Efren was having all sorts of trouble with his break. And uh, last time out, alright, he wrapped three in on the sync on the trot against Suki. But this, with this break in, it is enough to handle Bustamani, maybe even to beat him. Stuns the ball into the rail. It's got a lot of work to do here. Cue ball needs to be on the left-hand side for the red three next. You can see the three passes only to this pocket. And Reyes with so much angle on the two, he may have to play side cushion, side cushion to try and get back. Or what he could do is try and play the three into the center pocket here. That may be his only option. A deep screw with a lot of left-hand side and position the key here. Screw it is. A little short of pace. He needed to be a little further down because the orange five is the wrong end of the table for him. The only thing I can see, if he decides to attack, he's got two choices. He's either got to bank this and run through with the cue ball or a deep screw using the nine with a lot of left-hand side off two cushions back for the five. There you go. That was a much better pot than he made it look. Well, a magician 
showing that there's nothing wrong with his wand here. Picking the right time to come good, just as he did the other day against Suke. He was sat in his seat, 7-3 down, cobwebs round his shoes, then suddenly, Tinkerbell. Well, in the early indications in this one tell me that Efren Reyes came ready for this match. He's made some great shots already. Left himself in very uncomfortable situations, and this one doesn't look to be any different. He's so cautious, he doesn't want to touch that brown. Check. Look at the cue power there. Incredible. Loaded up with side and swung that white back for the seven. Tremendous shot from Reyes. They label him the magician. And you've just seen an example why. The nine down. And Efren Reyes has just put together what I think is his best visit in this match thus far. A break and finish, but he had so much work to do. Watch this white bend with the cue power here. Look at it off that cushion. And look where it leaves on the brown. 4-3 to Reyes the Magician. Yes, there's Efren Reyes. A lot of people feel that the winner of this match will be favorite to hoist the hardware. Hoist the hardware maybe, but nobody's going to hoist the white flag out there. These two Filipino legends locked into it. I'll echo the one thing that made me tip up Bustamani was how non-productive Efren's break was. Here we go again. Nowhere near the athleticism or the power. But still, Sid, he's 4-3 in front, and he hasn't really been hitting the break well. Yet in a, another example again. And he's usually leaving himself a shot on the one. It's always been his weakness. If he does have a chink in his armor, it's the break in nine ball. If he's potting balls on the break, but with his cue power and control, to get just one ball down from the break is enough. With Bristol Money, I've seen him get five from the break. Yes, but have a look at the bottom of the table, Sid. A lot of problems. The green six, the brown seven. That's going to be cause for concern, certainly for Reyes here. If there is to be a roadblock in winning this rack, it's going to come in that form. And the five is the wrong end of the table to try and develop it, so he may be forced yet again to play a combination six onto the seven. Into the cushion and screws to give himself a thin flick right. And he's got to get on the green six to play the shot that Jim suggested into the seven. That's exactly what he's looking at right now, just where he wants to leave the cue ball, right in this area. He comes down too far, then he's going to be playing against the eight. You can see him. He's got a nice angle on that five just to bring the cue ball back. This is a big shot here. Very close. That's right about where he wanted to be. Now, not just judging the combination shot here, Sid. He's got to judge where the six is going to go to leave it on. And that's just as hard. Big moment right now for Reyes. He's got the bit between his teeth and he wants to keep it there. Yeah, but with 
of its block unless I passes the nine yet to bring it out that far beautiful because he's cleared a passage past the nine ball I believe he has said great shot from Efren here happy to see that one disappear and happier again to see a shot on the six Well, that pocket haunted him, and with the six ball, if you remember in the second rack, it was the six he missed into that very pocket, and didn't it think about staying on the table again? Good good, then. Well, <laughs> look in. Pot in. 5-3 to Bata. Number one, Uno. Efren Reyes gets it to rack cushion. Yes, again, that green six. His heart definitely skipped a beat there. In the end, he got home and dry, and he's erased a two-rack deficit and turned it into a two-rack lead. Four on the spin. They could be taking some pretty fat envelopes to Manila. He's on the two, a long, difficult two. And the problem here, position onto the three. He's not controlling the white ball. Doesn't hit it with near the force Bustamante does, nor does he exercise the same control. And yet, he still finds himself at the table. That's because he doesn't miss. <laughs> now, that was a mixture of pride and envy in my co-commentator's voice there. Jim for my top snooker player. No mean hand at this. Reyes coming in with oodles of left and bottom. Yeah, I said you left out admiration. Goes without saying, kid. Now he just wants to ensure to get up for the orange five. The six available top left. And the combination eight nine. So he doesn't mind being pretty straight here, Sid. This looks perfect again. Just wants to be very close to where the five is, just a little below it, off that left-hand cushion. And uh, well, the, one, the awful thing is that we have seen some scrappy matches, to be blunt, occasionally. People overcome by the occasion or off the table or where the rack was, maybe. But the, I think there's 100 million people playing, and maybe another 10 million going to start after seeing this, but they make it look so easy that when you get the cue stick in your hand and have a go, you realize it ain't. He makes it look like he can hand that cue over to a guy walking on the street. Absolutely. And the combination 8-9 for 6-3. And five in a row. Francisco looks real low like a kid in detention. <laughs> for only getting 9 out of 10 instead of 10 out of 10. Just sitting there. Down goes the nine, and Reyes is really starting to motor here in our semi-final. He leads Francisco Bustamante six racks to three. Gerdet, to put it the local dialect, there's two Filipinos to extend the stage. Why not when they're two of the greatest in the world? And I've been reading in the papers that some of the BBC commentators that the Open Golf was slightly not given good respect to some of the players and the conditions. Well, we'll never get that from this team. We would pay for the privilege of commentating on this class of pool. Semi-final here between the magician Reyes against Django Bustamani. Go and Reyes' yeah. way at the moment. And how, Jim? Finally, Reyes misses off the break, or did he? No, he got one off the break. And again, Half a chance at the one. I didn't see one go down there, Sid, but obviously one's down. He changes with his break cue. Let's see which one he made. Oh, the brown seven just feathering into the center. Here he goes again. He's off the mark. And can't seem missing any of these, Jim. These two played in Reno, Nevada in America a couple months ago and Reyes came out on top there. 
first went to America in 1984. Was over there gambling under an assumed name. That's just what a legend he was. So well known he couldn't even use his own name. In Jody Land, that's called a sting. It's not far off over there, said. And in the last year, he's won the £65,000 Ultimate tool, tool Challenge, as well as the World 8 Ball Championship. Anything with six pockets, he's a threat. When he goes to Australia, even the kangaroos zip up. Would you say he's got the pace of the table? And the measure, maybe, of Busty. Mind, we all know what can happen if Busty Manti gets on there. He could run 6 or 7. Might not get out the seat, though. Remember, this guy was 7-3 down to Suke. And then he got out of the seat. And Rian Navaplu ran out to win. A little short of where he wanted to be. Intended to just draw that cue ball back another... 8 to 12 inches, I think, Sid, make his job a little easier. This still shouldn't pose any problems for him. Just around the side, around. And looking good for 7 3. Yeah, not the conventional way to play position, but effective. Come on. I would agree with Steve Davis' his point earlier on that in snooker there are just some things you do not even think of doing. In this, the mind boggles at what's possible with a great player. Six racks in a row. Efren the magician Reyes, 7-3 now in front of Francisco Bustamante and Sid. I believe the bookmakers were favoring Bustamante decidedly in this one. 7-4 to four on pretty tough to score when you don't get to the table. But if he did get to the table, he could run six or eight. No bother. And lest we forget, it was nothing more than a lax break-off from Francisco that parked him in his chair for six racks. The response from Reyes. Lost the cue ball into the center pocket, and since then, he's had no chance to reply. The cruelest of games, and he's suffering. Rack 11, Reyes to great, leading seven racks to three. Yeah, it makes both fighting seem like patty cake, patty cake, bankers, man. This is a very cruel game. You can be on form on your day, but if the other guy dominates the table, tough. That was his best break, and the first time he doesn't have a shot on the lowest numbered ball. He finally kept the cue ball in the middle. Didn't get a shot on a low ball. The two is the one he would like to have seen set up over a pocket. And nobody's saying anything about the weather rack is, how high it is now. And he's also getting the middle ball. Getting the one to come in the middle. There's several factors looking very ominous for Mr. Money here. Not least the score line, 7-3 down. Well, one thing about it, Francisco's been shut out for so long, someone may have to remind him what the rules are. <laughs> now, I remember years ago, the great Leighton Reese was probably watching this at Ponty Priest. He was captain of a three-man Welsh team, and I said, what's the team talk? He said, win. Just win. That's about the psychology that Francie... You don't need no more psychology than the bludgeon here. If you get up, You've got to run six or seven. What an ask if he does indeed get out of the seat. Oh, what a shot! Absolute brilliance by the maestro! Brings the crowd, really! Oh, what a shot! He wasn't on for the first time, and he put that in like a trace of bullet. The only problem is... He's got an equally difficult shot here against the three, a very fine cut. And look at him spin that in around the back of the four. This is phenomenal stuff. 
Well, Merlin that was had used to cast a few spells down on the banks of the Taff. This is a wizard at work. Weaving magic with that wand of wood. The form that Efren Reyes is showing us right now is unbelievable, Sid. This is the stuff that legends are made of right here. World semi-final against guy who most people read the best player in the world, Francisco Bustamante. And this man is doing just what he did to Suke, stringing them together like a blind fisherman mending a net. Experience dominant here. Sometimes he wheels the right gear, sometimes the skin do. Sometimes it's as fine as the smallest darning needle. Precision, immaculate control. Meanwhile, Busty sits and contemplates, forgets the rules. Well, this is the first time I've had the pleasure I've seen someone use that cue like a magic wand. But this is something to behold, the way he's playing right now. He is in the zone. Eight, three, seven racks in a row. And even when it looks like he's got to pull something out, he's equal to it. That's good when I was preparing for the Moscone Cup, and it's, uh, it's like the Whisper. It must be in the Whisper across Europe. and. The uh, early history of the Huns, the word Attila, Attila rang out. And the, the word that rang out then was Strickland. Then they started to talk about Efren Reyes. People said, hey, you've seen nobody till you've seen Reyes. Well, here we are in Cardiff. And what a time to show the likes of me and Jim and the rest of the world why he's talked of in hushed tones in this game. The long one. And he's going to be bridging right over the four ball. He's five racks clear, so certainly he's got to be feeling comfortable. He's got to be in that zone right now where a lot of the initial pressure and nerves are gone. He almost stalks the ball, Sid. And the interesting fact in the make of pool players is they, I wouldn't say they were grudging in praise, but they do not dish it out lightly. And, and I don't think any sport I've ever covered, from darts to domino toppling, have I ever heard of anybody talked of in the vener venerable tones of this man. He is an all-round legend. Well, he's just given us an example that he does, in fact, have a pulse, and he is human. The first slight mistake in position. He's got to come up with a great shot here to get from the three to the four. You were saying, Jim. Never doubted it for a minute. Now it almost looks like he can pot this and screw between the nine and the six. Off the side cushion, back out for the orange five. And certainly if Francisco even gets a chance, and the way Reyes is playing, I don't know if anyone thinks we're going to see Bustamante play another shot in this. But he's been sat down for so long, how could he possibly feel like he still had a touch for the table, his concentration level. It almost looks like he's playing every shot with Reyes to try and maintain that high focus that these players need. And I suppose in one sense, he has to do that, Sid. He's got to maintain that and hope and pray almost for that one mistake to let him back in. Doesn't look like coming though, because he ran a very similar game. He did eight racks from 7-3 down to beat Suke. 
This then for 9 3 to put them two away from the final. Mr. Manny scratched off a break. And now the maestro is 9 3 up. Can't bust that answer. Will he get a chance? Professional pool for over 30 years. I've seen the greatest players that ever lived, and I've never seen an exhibition like we're seeing right now. I am just thrilled that Sky Sports is putting this out right now because you out there that are watching this match, you are seeing the master of all time play his best game. This is beautiful. Francisco Bustamante led this match. Three racks to one. He scratched off of the break. Little was he to know that he has still not had another chance to get back to the table and he is trailing nine racks to three. <coughs> Efren Reyes, the magician, only needs two more racks to book his place in the final. You know, John, you and I were sitting out there in the stands watching the first part of this match and I've just never seen anything like it. This is why he is probably the greatest nine ball player, the greatest pool player that ever lived. Doesn't play on all of the world tournament scene now though, Efren Reyes. He still has that respect. We've said that throughout this week. 96 players came here for this tournament. And the majority of them put Efren Reyes as their favorite player. Well, at the beginning of this match, I was saying to you, John, that what this is about for Efren is to assert once again his supremacy as the number one player in the Philippines. There's a lot more at stake here than money. But at this point, he's asserting his supremacy as the best player on the planet. It is very much like a, a master with his pupil, though. But Francisco Bustamante is, is well regarded as the current best nine ball player in the world, but there's nothing he can do against this. This is just a lesson from his previous master, is it not? This is the best nine ball I've ever seen on TV. And I was there racking the balls when Earl Strickland ran the 11 racks. He didn't play this good. He made four nine balls on the break. These have all been run outs from the break. Several of the racks have been extremely difficult racks. That's a very good point there, Jay. We have seen a lot of good runs in this tournament. A lot of the time when the balls are breaking easily. Now, the balls aren't breaking easily here, but Efren is making some very, very difficult run outs look supremely easy. He ran out of rack there earlier where he had to bank that two ball off the end rail. There was no shot. How he found that shot, I have no idea. This, this is just heavenly pool. This, this to go within one rack of a final place. Down goes the nine. Efren Reyes continues this almost certainly best ever run of nine ball ever televised continues without doubt without doubt this is a keeper this tape for all time you'll never see better nine ball play than what you're seeing right now three to one he trailed francisco bustamante well regarded as the current best nine ball player in the world scratched and has not got back to the table in the last nine racks just one more rack to finish what would be surely the best run out of all time. I've never seen an exhibition like this. What's this is just amazing. Efren Reyes to break, leading 10 racks to three. Jay, if he can make this, how important would this be? If he runs 10 racks and out, I mean, I just... I don't know what to say about this one, John. I'm speechless. This is the best pool I've ever seen by far. And I've seen Earl at his best. Well, he's got to come with a combination now, right from the beginning. That's one right. seven. This could be the shot. I think he can see enough of the one to play the combination. But this is not easy. <coughs> Believe me, at this point, Efren's not looking for any safeties. He's just shooting. If he makes this combination, it's all over. Oh. Well, the crowd appreciates him.
that that run was just a phenomenal run from Efren Reyes. Well, what a say smiles as he comes to the table. You think he can run eight racks right back at him? That would be something. Jay, if that was to happen, what sort of a match would we be watching? He's definitely got a great chance of running this wreck. He's been sitting in that chair for 45 minutes. I'm surprised he can get up to the table at all. Well, these players saved their best for the last, John. Incredible games so far. Francisco Bustamante comes to the table. The last time he was at the table, he was winning three racks to one. He had the break. He was feeling pretty confident in a good mood. Yeah, I'm in control here. Lost the white ball off of the break. And the next time he comes, he finds himself seven racks down. You know, Efren's been struggling all week. He did have that one match where he ran seven racks, but uh, he's been kind of spotty in his play. He's saved his best for last. This is vintage Reyes right now. That's right, Joe. We had heard throughout Efren had struggled all through the group stages, his early knockout games. He, he was just doing enough to get through, but he hadn't really had that fluency that Francisco Bustamante had been showing in the tournament. But every single player I spoke to said, just don't be surprised. Just do not be surprised if he just switches and turns on and runs a match. Well, we've seen it twice from Efren Reyes. You never know that this, it might not have even been enough in this match. up a little tough here on the one ball, John. Yeah, he got the power, but you could see there he got a little deep into the into the cue ball, and that means that he hasn't been able to stop the cue ball into the center-ish of the table. He's come back and um, really has left him no shot on the one. He wants to shoot the one ball all the way down in the lower right corner. Like, can I show you on this one here? All the way down here into this corner. That's where he wants to shoot the one. He doesn't really want to play safe here. It's well, there just is no safety against these two guys. He that did play safe. safe. That looks safe, but don't be surprised if Efren just kicks out of this and pots it and clears out and runs again. Frankly, I'm surprised. He didn't shoot at the ball because I don't think you really want to let Efren come back to the table anywhere. Efren will kick three rails and hit this ball. But the brilliance of Efren, Efren will go here, there, and here and hit this ball. But Efren not only plays to hit the ball here, John, he plays to knock the one ball away and leave the cue ball hidden somewhere behind other balls. That's how clever he is and how skilled he is. That's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. And as you can see, he didn't leave Francisco a shot. Well, I think Francisco might be forced into or tempted by the bank here into the top left-hand bag. I think he needs to take this opportunity. He's either banking or he's cutting it in the upper right corner. He may cut it straight down the table here, right along the rail. Just like that. Missed it rather badly, actually. Well, Jay, I think that was possibly a harder shot than the bank there. The, the bank would clearly pass. Chance here for Efren. I mean, there's no easy shot, but he could bank the ball back into the side bag. So what he's looking at to come right bring the white around the table? No, it doesn't look like he is. He might be banking into the top left-hand corner. Well, that's safe. Another safety. safety. Another safety. Yes. He doesn't need to take chances, of course. They're friend reading 10 racks to 4. 
Yeah, Efren doesn't want to take any chances here. And Efren's got all these weapons in his arsenal. Not only can he run out from anywhere, but he plays the best safeties of anybody, and he kicks the balls better than anyone. Well, it's a good escape by Francisco, but you have to think that the chances of him coming back to the table with Efren in this form are slim. Nice opening here for Efren. He's got to gently roll the one ball in the corner pocket and let the cue ball just drift back up towards the middle of the table. Yeah, he was just looking there where he wants to leave the white for the two, and it seemed to be by his stroke there. He'd like to use the cue ball pretty much where it is now. I'm surprised if he draws this ball. I think he just needs to roll it in with center ball. We'll know as soon as he gets down on the shot, John. I often see Efren just do a little cue action in the air, which is mimicking what he wants to play next. You're right. He's drawing the ball back, which means he can hit it a little bit firmer. Oh, it's a kill shot. They call that a kill shot. He uses low English, makes the cue ball die. It's a little more secure way of pocketing the ball. Nobody does it any better than Efren. That worked perfectly for him there. Nicely on the two into the side. Chances of Francisco getting back to the table, Jay? Not good. Only difficult ball Efren's got is the six, tied up against the seven. However, if he can get nice and straight on the five and just stun the cue, we'll leave it where the five is. He's got a perfect shot on the six into the center bag, so the five really helping his positional play onto the six. You called it exactly right, John. Just these five balls for a place in the final of the 1999 World Pool Championships. He hasn't shown his best form throughout the whole tournament, only when he needed to. That's the sign of a true champion. I feel sorry for whoever he plays in the finals, I'll tell you. They're in for a long afternoon. Or night, as the case may be. Well, he'll be up against either Ho Ping Chang or Fong Pang Chao, that all Taiwanese clash in the second semi final coming up right after this match. Both of those players very accomplished, but I think you'd probably have to say that Efren would be going into that final as favourite. Just these two balls to win. The semi-final of the Philippines. Come on, baby. Yeah. An absolutely incredible match is now over. Efren Reyes in scintillating form beats his fellow Filipino Francisco Bustamante. Eleven racks to four. There was a.